Once you have finished examining the corpse, be sure to report to Anarieta. Anarieta? Her Grace, the Duchess. I forget myself at times. We address each other by our first names in private. Never in Pomrin's presence, however. He finds such familiarity offensive. Rolling on an empty stone. A watering hole for traders, smugglers, boatmen. But you will find no better crayfish chowder in all Toussaint. They say her grace is uh, pulled in some of the beast. I've sweat dripping down ah. her bum the north, they say. What? With no lads brave enough? <laughs> of course we have. But bravery is not enough against the beast. It wields dark powers. That calls for a witcher. By my troth, could that be the musty scent of fresh pate? Naught else, Sir the Peyrak Peyrin. I see time has not dulled your senses. We would be honored if you would join us. Uh, your companion as well. But why do I not detect even a whiff of crayfish chowder? No soup today, on account of there being no crayfish. I reckon you've not heard, but all I caught was a corpse. I awoke at the crack of dawn, as I do each day. But when I looked up, I beheld a blood-red sky. This corpse is precisely why we're here. For the man whom you've invited to join you at the table was summoned from a far-off land by her gracious magnificence. He is tasked with tracking and killing the beast. We invited two men to join us, yet since Sir the Peyrak Peyrin in temperament is more akin to hare than hound, I surmise the other is the hunter. With whom do we have the pleasure? Name's Geralt. A humble introduction. You've clearly not tarried long with Sir the Peyrak Peyrin. Spare us the petty insults. Geralt is a master of the witchery trade. He has questions concerning the beast's last victim. I was the one to find the corpse. The sun had just risen when I awoke, sat straight up in my bed, looked out the window, and beheld a sky red as blood. Ask her, please, or we shall be here till winter. Must have been early in the morning. Went to check your nets and then... I stepped out of my hut and saw... By my throat, to the point, man! You found a body ensnared in your crater's nest. We know this already! What would happen then? Did you see anything? Did you spy? Did no one? Anything at all? Not the soul around, just me. As for noteworthy... Well... What did you see? The war. I hear the sky was red again. I saw... A head. Body, eyes bulging, the tongue blew and popped out. Next to it, a hand rocking upon the water. Get a good look at the body parts. They gave me such a fright, I bolted to town fast as my legs would take me, then returned with guardsmen who told me to keep out of their way. They had a hard haul. The parts were so tangled up in my nets, they were forced to cut them. <laughs> Need to examine the body. Know where they took it? They ferried it across, then loaded it on a cart and hauled it to a cellar at Corfo Bianco to keep it cool, see? What? Why, Corfo Bianco is Baron Brassel's estate. When he learns they've turned his cellar into a morgue, he'll set his house on them. While you were gallivanting about the north, his vineyard was auctioned off. Who was that? Woman who just left. Didn't see her before. Didn't notice her walk in, either. Doubtless Linnis, the innkeeper. But hold, girl, because this is an outrage. Rossell's vineyard was auctioned off? Inconceivable! It is no secret the Baron had gambling debts up to his ears. It finally came time to collect. His creditors auctioned off his property. The Ducal Chancellery bought it. Rossell now bunks with his brother in Vicar Farm. I told Russell he'd get his commandments. How long can one draw on past heroics? Those creditors must finally have defined that his promises meant nothing. Such are the times. 
Today's knights are pale shadows of the heroes of yore. It's true what they say. God sent the beast to punish us for straying from the old paths. So folk think the beast's divine punishment. Knights have turned their backs on the old customs. Where they were defenders of the duchy, they're now defenders of their own touches. Why, you insolent? Let them talk. The Duchess traits in titles, grants honors to ill to us. We've strayed from the path of virtue, lost the god's favor, so the gods sent retribution. Don't listen to that nonsense, girl. It's rehashed street preacher of God. Yes, the rebel rousers have been sprouting up like weeds lately, each offering the same bill of goods. They say anything else about the beast? Besides it being a messenger of the gods. The two Saint-Trois are no fools. They see clearly the beast kills on days honoring patron saints. Picky monster. Thanks for the hospitality. Time I examined the corpse. Covo Bianco lies a short way from here, near the tourney grounds. Just follow the road and you'll arrive. Not coming with? Oh yeah, duty of some sort calls. Some sort. <laughs> Her grace bestowed a great honor, even before the departed profession. I'm to play the hair during this year's game in the palace gardens. When you see me in my costume, you will wet yourself laughing. A little tempted to ask a few questions, but it sounds like a long, complicated story. One involving lengthy digressions into local history and tradition. So, see you later, Melton, and good luck. Ah, uh, well, compared hey, to Oh, dear fellow, Were you know neither the day nor like that, the hour. You pick of the latest. With a fish sock like that, you must have your pick of the ladies. Uh, normally, I'd encourage you to try our famed fisherman's chowder. But alas, we are all out of crayfish. Could replace them with something else. Perch, for example. Replace crayfish with fish? I beg you. What next? Vinegar for wine? Parsley for thyme? Huh? Your nordlings are a pleasant lot, but about cuisine you know nothing. Got any gossip? Fishermen talking about anything interesting? Yes. About a nortling who would replace crayfish with pike. Asked a serious question. Hmm. And a tactless one. I do not if stroke on my clients, and I certainly don't repeat anything I chance to hear. Show me what you got in stock. Thanks. So long.